Welcome to our 12 days of Christmas webinar event. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, introduce yourself in the chat. It's great to see you here today for day 11. So today I have a little quiz for you while we get started and let everyone enter the room. We're gonna have a review and you can answer in the chat to see um, how uh, much you've been paying attention over the last several days, the last 11 days to be more precise. <laughs> the first question I have for you in this quiz is, what is the name of the reindeer in Joan's office? What's her name, that reindeer in the back corner of Joan's office? I'm waiting to see the chat, see if someone gets it. Oh, there she oh, is. She, yay, there she is. She it said it. Oh, I think it was St. Bruce. Oh, there was, <laughs> it goes so fast. Yes. Thank Good you. job, everyone. Yes, her name is Snowberry. No. Yes. Thank you so much. I have a few people. Snowflakes. <laughs> it's Snowberry. Cranberry yes. or cherry deer. I love it. <laughs> yeah, Joan's got a little sign there. You got the sign, Joan, for her name. Hello, my name is Snowberry. <laughs> awesome. Here we go. Ever since the reindeer game where we asked all of you to name her, every day we've seen several questions in the webinar about what is her name. We've also <laughs> had a lot of questions about our sneaky Santa. So what, who is the identity of our sneaky Santa that's shown up a couple of times throughout this webinar series? I think, let's see here, we've got some hellos and welcomes moscow Idaho. oh there we go there we go malia, there we, there we are yep they got her it's malia malia is the sneaky santa <laughs> okay the next question is who is that man in the lower corner of the screen we keep getting that question in the chat throughout the webinars i see his picture is it supposed to be there who is that man <laughs> on the webinar screen of uh, there we go oh, yes, yes. Brian. yes thank you Eric. Josh somebody Josh, Josh. <laughs> Joel no Joe's son yes <laughs> yes Brian Joe's son. son oh that's awesome Brian's a great IT guy so bonus question what is Brian's role during the webinars do you know what Brian is doing yes and he says hello there so that gives it away <laughs> so brian um you see his picture there in the lower corner he is the administrator the webinar administrator yes great job everybody the it guy the web admin admin yes so brian does all of the um answering back and forth with you in the chat when you're having trouble logging in or when you have a question and you see something come from the webinar administrator, that's Brian. So his picture's down there so you can put a face along with that webinar administrator and his name. Okay, and then I have another question for you, multiple choice. How long are these 12 days of Christmas webinars? Okay, we have 12 days, so there's 12 webinars, but time-wise, are they 15 minutes, 30 minutes, one hour? <laughs> Oh, somebody said Brian was eye candy. Eye candy. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are too funny. 30 <laughs> minutes. Yes, yes, yes. Look at all that. 30 minutes. The webinars are scheduled for 30 minutes. Sometimes we do go over a little bit just because we have some bonus information to share with you or something happens during the webinar and we want to address that. We talked a little bit more. And the other day we had a pillar huddle after our webinar and the whole team came into my office. So that was a little bit longer, but ideally, they have been 30 minutes. And my next question for you is, um, we do have a handout for today. How do you access the handout for today's webinar? Oh, look, webinar administrator just popped the question up for you right there. He's doing, <laughs> he's doing a great job. <laughs> yes, yes, and he's raising the roof over there on his side of the, I can see Brian through my window. <laughs> Good job, Brian. So yes, you can get that through the email or the link that the webinar administrator just provided to you. All of the webinar emails that you get reminding you before the webinar begins have a handout link and there's a page where you can download that handout. So it looks like um, just one more question and that is about certificates. We get that question a lot about how do I access my certificate after the webinar? So I'm going to ask you, 
who remembers how to access their certificate after the webinar? Yes, Kim, we have started. It looks like they the blog. There we go. Lots of people just answered on the blog. So every day I post our follow-up to this program right on the blog so that you can access all the resources that we talk about throughout the day, the handout, the chat archive, and your certificate and the replay link. So that is what I have for you today. We are going to um, hand the program over to Joan and I will be back later with giveaways and special <laughs> offers. Yay! All right, I'm ready to start. This is the 11th day of 12 webinars and um, it's my last day actually to be on the webinar with you because tomorrow we have a very special guest. So please make sure you finish out through the 12 days because there's going to be more giveaways tomorrow and Christy Civic is amazing. It's going to be a wonderful webinar, but um, when I close, I'll make my closing comments to all of you, but let's get started. So the last topic that I selected for us is mastering exceptional self-leadership. And this is a topic that I, again, love to speak on and uh, I believe is very valuable to any individual because I noticed early on in our chat box, someone who's watching, they are having their department Christmas party. So the department is watching today. <laughs> so um, if, if someone is wa watching this webinar and is not an administrative professional, it's okay because self-leadership is for everyone. A few years ago, or maybe, I think maybe two years ago, Jasmine and I, did a two-day workshop entitled Mastering Exceptional Self-Leadership. And we went to, I think, about four or five cities where we presented that program. And uh, we covered a lot of territory in two days. So first of all, the overall concept of self-leadership is exactly what it says. This is about leading ourselves, not leading others. The great news is, though, when we lead ourselves, we actually lead others. Because when someone sees you taking charge of your life and taking charge of circumstances and leading yourself in the five pillars, career, family, financial, spiritual, and wellness, they, they're going to notice that and they're going to want to do the same things in their lives. So you actually inspire others um, without even really knowing it. So that's what's great news about it. The other part of self-leadership, the benefits to you is, again, you're making the decisions. Um, even though life comes at you and different things come at you at work and maybe you feel like you don't have a lot of control as an administrative professional because everyone's telling you what to do, ultimately you still have control. You're still the one making a choice at this given moment as to what task you're going to focus on or what project, how you're going to respond to a situation, um, you're choosing your priorities throughout the day, so you have a lot more power than you realize. In our two-day workshop, just to give you an idea of the areas we covered where you can practice self-leadership, um, one is self-management versus stress management. Uh, so that's about juggling work, home, and your personal life. And the concept there is, is really that if we manage ourselves, we manage our thoughts really about things and situations and people, we are going to manage our stress. So self-management has been the, the newer approach for several years actually to managing stress. And don't worry, I'm going to get to your handout and your bullet points. I just want to share some of the air, other areas that you can lead yourself in. Um, another topic we had covered in our live, leading boldly, brightly. I'm going to talk about that a little bit today when we get into our bullet pointed items. Creating your strategic partnerships, that's a huge area where you can um, self-lead. And when you take the leadership role in building that partnership with your executive, you're going to lead and guide your executive to create the kind of partnership that you know is going to be beneficial to both of you. 
self-leadership in your professional trademark. So we talked about that earlier on in our 12 days uh, of webinars here. And if you missed it, I hope you go back and listen to that webinar. It was an excellent program. Um, big and bold principles. So that's another area to lead. And the big and bold really is built around the book that I wrote, Give Yourself Permission to Live a Big Life, which we did talk about again in our webinars this uh, past, I think it was this past week or last week. I don't know. We've done so many now. You can self-lead and create or by creating your career portfolio. That demonstrates self-leadership. Another segment was uh, from chaos to control. Another area to um, practice your self-leadership is managing your work, managing your time, making sure you're prioritizing appropriately. We talked about earlier the ABC method. Um, and two other areas we talked about self-leadership is really unleashing your creativity, which I'm going to talk about a little bit today, more from what are some of the, the blocks to creativity and let you do a self-assessment. And then another area that we actually didn't touch on during our webinars, but it is an important piece, and maybe I'm, we'll talk about it and um, have a webinar in 2017. It has to do with peer synergy and learning, you know, to work with your peers. So let's go to our handout because I'm going to um, expand on some of those concepts that I just went through with you. So where can you practice, again, self-leadership? And, and really becoming a master at it. You're probably doing some of these things that I am going to cover today, but the idea is that you move into 2017 and to make it a goal to really become a master of self-leadership in these areas. So the first one I have is willed the power of a professional image. And I know we could spend an entire webinar just on professional image. It, it's so controversial today with everyone um, with casual dress. And I'll hear, I'll hear a system say, well, my manager doesn't really care how she dresses or he dresses, so why should I care? Um, bottom line, you, you self-lead. You, what are your career goals? What are your aspirations? How do you want to be perceived? That's what's really important. And you have to have the courage to, to dress the way that um, is going to best project the image that you want in the workplace. Not necessarily how maybe you just think you want to, you know, dress for the day based on how you felt. And we talked about this many times. So I don't want to spend too much time on it. But um, I don't see maybe a lot of people who actually take control um, and understand that image is power. The image is, um, well, I won't say image is power because if you don't have that real professional image, you're not going to wield power. So anyways, I think we're going to put that on our list as a topic for next year, maybe a Facebook Live. That would be interesting. The second area for self-leadership, engage in the scope of your executive's work. So don't wait for your executive to bring you into the partnership and bring you into the game. And don't wait for your executive to tell you to make decisions on their certain things. Insert yourself. Take the lead in building that relationship. Take the lead in um, scheduling your daily huddles. Now, I know when we um, discuss partnerships. Earlier in the 12 days, I saw many of our um, respondents say, I try, I try, I get brushed off, my executive ignores me, they don't may believe in making time. Well, just don't accept it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, it does take work. I'm not saying it's easy. You have to be persistent. When you're a leader and you're developing leadership, you're persistent in what you believe in. You're persistent in what you know is right and what's going to be best for your executive or your department or your organization. I'm not saying every person out there will change. I know and I understand that certain managers are going to just do what they want. But I could also tell you 
that there, are, there is a high percentage of executives who do change as a result of you know, being persistent and, and showing them and teaching them how to work with their executive assistant. The third is to develop staying power. This is a great area to really manifest self-leadership. It's hard to stick with something, especially when you feel physically tired, when you feel defeated, when it's not going your way. And this can be in any of your five pillars, career, family, financial, again, spiritual, and wellness. Um, we need to have staying power. So it's the end of the year. Think about what were the goals you thought about last December for the new year of 2016? What goals did you thought about as you started 2016? What were some of your dreams, you know, personally and professionally? And I'd also like you to think about, were there any things that you kind of gave up on because it got tough? or life got in the way, or, you know, people got in your way, you know, things happened, um, and you just ran out of steam, and so now it's your end, and you're like, well, yeah, I didn't get that accomplished. What I'd like you to do or encourage you to do as you, you know, start out on your new year, starting out's the easy part. Sticking with something and really seeing it through is the hard part. So exercise that muscle of staying power um, just when you feel like you you're want to give in and you're too tired. Go that extra five minutes. Go that extra 10 minutes. Just when you feel like giving up on, you know, talking to someone and getting them to, to change, you know, just take that extra one more chance because you just don't what might be on the other side. Uh, the next one, self-leadership. Discover new ways to promote your valuable skills at work. So um, this ties into making your talents known, making your talents visible, and how do you do that? That's self-leading. Again, you're not waiting for someone else to give you kudos. You're not waiting for someone else to identify or point out those traits. You're doing, uh, you're having a self-assessment and you're looking at, you know, what are some of the new skills that I've developed, where are the new areas I've grown, and making sure you are promoting that in the workplace. So when we were in our workshop, when we were talking about shining brightly, um, one thing I love is we talked about shining brightly is a journey. It's not a destination. So it's not like you strive to shine brightly and be visible and then stop and, okay, that's it. I've arrived. Shining brightly will be a lifelong journey. And areas we talked about, you know, within that is to be able to self-manage. So managing your, your thoughts, managing your reaction to things, self-motivate if you're going to shine brightly you have to be the one motivate yourself and you know some days that's really really hard to do and as i said it's the self-assessment um and then as you look at the array of new skills that you've developed over a year then look at and identify the ways that you're able to promote that and it's not bragging i know sometimes people will say well, I don't want to brag, you know, I'm not saying brag. <laughs> what I'm saying is today is you do have to let people know what you're capable of doing so they can leverage your talents and be able to push assignments your way that are going to be in line with your talents. The next strategy, so let's see, we've had one, two, three, four, number five, create breakthroughs by accessing your creativity. Now, I've talked about creativity a few times um, over our webinar series, but what I'd like to share with you right now and let you um, give yourself a little test in your own mind. So what I'm gonna do is go through some of the common creativity blocks and in your own mind think which of these pertain to you, you know, maybe why you don't feel creative, you aren't creative. So 
One block is an inability to tolerate ambiguity. In other words, overriding desire for security and order. Some people like everything very stable, very orderly, very secure. And if you go outside that box, they get all ruffled. We see that sometimes, you know, in class. We see that sometimes on a webinar um, that some people are really not comfortable. But, you know, that's a lot of times where innovation and creativity really comes and the good ideas come when we're outside of that area of security and order. Uh, there's seven I'm going to go through. The second one, a creativity block, is lack of challenge. So maybe you just don't feel challenged, you're not engaged in that particular project or that problem, and so, yeah, you don't feel very creative about it. But don't let that stop you. Number three, lack of access to physical environment. So sometimes we feel like, how could I be creative in this space? How could I be creative at work with all these open workstations and everybody's talking and there's noise and I hear phones and all of that. Um, and I do agree that certain places or spaces I know they make me more creative. You know, if I'm working from my office at home, it's early morning, it's quiet, I'm not distracted, I have a lot of ideas flowing through. I come into the office, yes, there's a lot of disruption and interruption. But also I know that there are times that you can be creative even in the midst of chaos because you may not have the option to go pick your physical environment. Number four, all right, this is a good one, everyone. Preference for judging ideas rather than generating. Think about that one. You know, when you're with a group um, and people are presenting different ideas, do you tend to judge the ideas rather than sit and generate? Uh, and maybe that's something you see in some of your coworkers when you're getting together and you're talking about different ideas. Um, maybe even when you're with one-on-one -on -one with your manager, you maybe you do generate ideas and you have a manager who's always judging your idea. So we just want to make sure we're not the ones who just sit there and judge, 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 judge and cut people's ideas down. Like, um, get yourself involved in the creative process. And before you know it, you will find that there are creative ideas you can offer. Number five, this is a good one, fear of making a mistake. Maybe um, you're just afraid to be a little creative and, and think outside the box. So an example I just thought of, um, we're doing something very creative. We're offering learning at sea next March. This is the first in the industry. We are actually doing training on a cruise ship and it's serious training. It will be 16 hours of training over three days. So yeah, there was fear and in fact that was something I've wanted to do since 1990 and fear held me back because I thought, well, what if it doesn't work? What if we don't really get attendees? What if managers don't support you know, there is systems on that and that. And then I finally got to a point where it's like, okay, you know, this, this is innovative. This is, you know, the future. So we've got to step out there a little bit. And, and if we do the mistake and we didn't make the best call, then we just learn from that. Uh, number six is an inability to relax to incubate and sleep on something. So sometimes we're trying so hard to come up with the, the perfect answer, the answer, the creative idea. And if you just let it go and just let it simmer, you'll be amazed of when that idea will come to you. I know this happens to me frequently. And, um, it's great when I, if you have the time and you could put something aside for a while or being in, in a relaxed environment. I know for my team, the Office Dynamics team, this past year we've tried to have our, um, some of our staff meetings in different environments. We go to this cute little coffee shop five minutes from our office. We find that when we're out of our typical environment and we're more relaxed, then we tend to have good ideas. Um, 
And then the last creativity block is excessive zeal. That's over motivation to succeed quickly. So maybe if you're working with a group or a team or even yourself, you just want to hurry up and succeed. And what's happening is you're not letting the creative process take place. So there is a process with creativity. All right, let's go on. We have two areas for self-leadership is finding strength in communities. So this does have to do with collaborating and working together with your administrative peers. And again, don't sit back and wait. Um, you can be the leader. You could be the one to get some of your administrative peers to go to lunch. You could be the one to host lunch and learn sessions. And we have a lot of assistants that have done that over the years. They get our books, become an inner circle assistant, um, and maybe a, my other book, and they'll, they'll just take all the chapters and go through that book over a year's time. The idea is you, you don't have to wait. Be the one who takes the initiative, who reaches out, who builds that community. And again, as you do that, is you show that you can accept differences and work with different personalities, you're going to encourage your peers to do the same thing. And then last is to practice self-leadership in the five pillars. So as our year comes to an end, and as we start our new year, well, first of all, you still have a couple weeks left. So as you go through the rest of 2015, have you given attention well, I'm sure you've given attention all year, but I don't mean just going to work. Have you really thought about your career and worked on your plan for next year? Family, if you look back over an entire year, how much time have you devoted to family? I don't mean just going out to eat and then everybody's on their devices. I mean, what percentage of time did you actually sit and play games with your kids or converse with your children. How much time? It's not too late, the year's not over. Have family time. Or what about friends? Are there friends that you haven't really paid attention to this year? What about neighbors? Is there a neighbor who's struggling? Maybe there's an older person in your neighborhood who lives by themselves. Pets, pets are part of our family. Have you even made time to just sit and play with your pet? You know, we're always so busy. Financial, the year's coming to an end. Where do you stand financially? No, and if you're in a good space, awesome. You know, have you had some struggles this year? Maybe some things have happened that you couldn't even control. That's okay. Take the lead. Do what you have to do. Get your debts paid off. Um, put your savings away. Make it fun. Get your kids involved. Uh, if, let's say, next year your family, you want to go to Disney, um, get a, a big jar. And have the kids help put money in that jar, any little thing they can do. Go sell lemonade, you know. <laughs> Make it a family thing. Your spiritual pillar. How you led in your spiritual pillar this year? What percentage of time did you devote to whatever that is for you? You know, I don't know what that is. I know what it is for me. It's not too late. You still have, what, three more weeks. Wellness. What percentage of time did you focus on your wellness this year? Did you get the test done that you were supposed to get done? Um, blood work. Have you been, whatever your health routine is, your fitness routine, are you getting off the couch? Are you watching, you know, that you're not just, you know, eating fast food a lot? You know, all of those things. Are you getting the sleep you need? That's an important part of wellness. So finish and do what you need to do. Have the staying power for the rest of this year. And then set new goals for your new year. Be the leader of your life. It is your life. And it's not about being selfish. It really isn't. Because when you take care of yourself and you nurture your pillows, you're going to be a much better person for all people that at work and at home. 
So those are my closing statements for 2016. Excellent, Joan. You froze up there, so I wasn't sure if you were finished talking. Sorry. <laughs> All good. Okay. Well, so, so much great information, not just today, but over the last 11 days, and we're not finished yet. I know jo this is Joan's last webinar with us this week, um, but we do have our final webinar with Chrissy Civic tomorrow, and we want to let you know about our special offers as well as do our giveaways for today. So stay tuned and yes, yeah, go ahead and um, let Joe know um, how you feel about this webinar series there. She reads the chat and she'll be, um, today will be no different. I'm sure she'll be taking that with her on the plane that she can peruse um, all of your notes and just see uh, what how you interacted with each other throughout the, the time during the chat, what questions you asked, and of course, letting her know that you're thankful for that series that we've provided. So um, while they're doing that and saying thanks to you, Joan, I am going to talk about our special offer for today because it's a really great one. So Mastering Exceptional Self-Leadership, like Joan said, is, um, is a recording of a live program that Joan and I did while we were in, um, we went to Chicago and San, San Jose and Atlanta, and it was just, it was a really wonderful course, and it still is. We've got just great content in there. You get a downloadable version of the workbook that Joan held up earlier in the webinar nice big workbook and you go through the exercises and it's a $249 value if you were to buy that online learning program any other time. During our 12 days event, uh, we are reducing that price to $98. And because it's an online learning program, there's no shipping and um, there's no tax for you. So it's a great, it's a great investment, I'd say two days worth of learning for $98. And um, you can get that for yourself, you can get it as a holiday gift for someone. So just want to let you know about that mastering exceptional self leadership is the offer for today. And I believe there's a link to it in the chat. And of course, our webinar administrator, Brian is helping me out with sharing those um, links for you as well. And Joan, did you have anything you wanted to say about that before I, I dive into giveaways? No, oh. I'm good. All right. I, I kept hearing something on that end, so I wanted to make sure I wasn't Sorry. missing. No, that's okay. All right. Well, with that, it definitely is <laughs> giveaway time. <laughs> uh, yay, we go. Giveaways. Woo, 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 giveaways. Giveaways. Well, today's prize is going to be our 2016 conference on demand because the recordings from that event were amazing and the, the live event that we hosted in Las Vegas in October was fantastic. The content with um, all of our speakers was just phenomenal. Kamisha Foley, Peggy Vasquez, um, who else was there? Let's see, Dr. Darren Martin, who Joan mentioned a couple of times earlier in our other webinars through this series. Tess Vismail, um, Joan mentioned her a day or two ago as well. So there's so much in that program and it's a $500 value. We are going to give that away to two lucky winners. And when we review the chat, we're also going to be finding someone who answered all of our questions and picking one of those winners mm -hmm. as well. So um, how I choose our winner is I have on my um, panel a, a it's a, if you see the chat, I also have a way to go into the room and see who's all in the webinar with us. So it looks like we have 586 people live out of almost 3,300 people that have registered for the event. So that's where I go and I just randomly scroll through that list and pick. So I know some of you were asking, how does Jasmine pick the winner? That's, that's how we do it. So our first winner of the 2016 Conference on Demand, the Revolutionary Assistant, is Marianne. Marianne Porter at Symmetra. Yay! <laughs> we love it when we get those bells going. And Janine, let's see here. Janine Smith at, uh, yes, Janine Smith. And that's Janine with two N's because I know Smith is a, it's a common name. So J-E-A-N-N-I. 
N-E. And I have your email address here, so I will be getting in touch with both of you about your prizes for today. And we also wanted to let you know, um, while Joan's still on the line here with us too, that we have just been feeling extra generous with this whole 12 days event. And um, we don't want that to stop. So what we're going to do is extend our offers. Some of them will be extended through Tuesday. So basically any item that needs to be shipped, that offer will now expire on Tuesday instead of Friday. So if you need a few more days to get that purchase made, we're giving that to you. And anything that you can be purchased or that can be purchased as an online down live program that you're registering for, those offers will be extended through the end of December. Through so December 31st, 2016 will now be their expiration date. So we're our team is working on making that happen today so that all of those offers will stay good um, for you. And the reason we, some of them are expiring on Tuesday is because we will be out of the office for a few days celebrating the holidays and we want to make sure that your order is not sitting here being attended to. So we just want to make sure that you have that time and that you are enjoying these special offers. So we want to make sure you have the time to make those purchases if needed. Uh, before I mention tomorrow's webinar, Joan, is there anything else you'd like to add? Oh, yes, a couple of things. So uh, somebody asked, hey, can't we have three more giveaways? So sure. we, we could do that. <laughs> and, but let me address the other two. I saw at the chat box, somebody had mentioned travel funds are really limited and, and what other uh, tools are available. So if you go to officedynamics.com, we have tons of free educational programs. So we have over 50 educational videos just on our website alone. If you go to Office Dynamics YouTube channel, we have over 150 educational videos for administrative professionals. On our website, we have articles for you, downloadable um, articles. We have uh, over a thousand blogs. Um, we have an ebook, right, Jasmine? So all types of resources available, you know, at no cost, and you don't have to travel. And then last, really important question I saw. Who's going to ring the jingle bell tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> I know the question is going to ring. Uh, Jasmine, a good question. I'll, I'll, turn, I'll turn my bell over to you. Officially, I'll give my bell to Jasmine. You're not going to put it in your bell. bag when you leave today and take it along with you? <laughs> Yeah, I should on the airplane tomorrow. <laughs> oh, good. Well, we'll make sure that we have someone in charge of ringing the jingle bell tomorrow when we come back with our webinar. And for the three extra winners that you insisted upon, we are, let's see here, going through the room. And I look away when I click just to make sure I'm not <laughs> anyone on, you know, on purpose. So we have... Tracy, all, and Tracy, your last name, I see Allridge, A-L-R-I-D-G-E, so T. Allridge, and I also have um, selected Christine H. at McWhinney, M-C-W-H-I-N-N-E-Y, and Meredith Roselli, Meredith Roselli, R-O-S-S-E-L-L-I. So I selected those there while, Joan, while you were talking about some of the programs that we have available. Good. And so we will be working now on getting that blog posted for you with all the resources from today's webinar, along with finding someone to ring that jingle bell during tomorrow's <laughs> webinar, the proactive professional with Chrissy Civic. So please join us. We have a special surprise for you at the end of tomorrow's webinar. So don't miss out and we'll uh, see you all very soon. And Joan, wishing you safe travels and a thank Merry you. Christmas while you go celebrate with your family. Yeah, thank you. Merry Christmas, everyone, and Happy New Year. Thanks so much. See you in 2017.